right, we are back into champion select between Becker and Framingham. I'm gonna swap it right on over now, and I'm actually gonna have to change the uh, overlays for the teams now. Left school is no longer Framingham. I have lied to you. I know. I know. I am sorry. It is Becker, and on the right side, it is now Framingham. Bop, bop. Just like that. So. It does seem like the bands are staying pretty normal. You have the Silver Band, Udyr Band, and Silas Band. I am curious if they are going to ban either Yasuo or Kennen, seeing as those were probably the biggest uh, biggest issues for them. Yeah, I, I we do see a new new band coming out of Framingham, though, right? Yeah, so they so, don't want to deal with any of that. Yeah, the Udyr snowballs. Band, pretty consistent. Silas Band, I think I think Becker banned Silas last game, Yeah, right? they did. Yeah, so is it going to be... It's the Yasuo... Yeah, so the Astro band there is going to do it. Going to stop Fixie from picking that up, trying to stomp in lane. Mm, and the, they the ban the Kennen. Oh, band maybe from because they are him. blue okay. side and they don't want to give that pick over. I do believe that their top laner is a Kennen player. Uh, yeah, no, he has played a lot of Kennen. He's the one who had like really? a 80% win rate or something over like 14 oh, games. Oh, so, so both of the top laners are Kennen yeah. players. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but the Lulu. Okay. I haven't seen a Lulu in a game in so long. Because we've, in, especially in competitive, right? We've seen Alistar. We've seen stuff like that. We've seen, what is it? We've yeah, seen mostly, Orn and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mostly sports to set up in gauges rather than Chanter sports. But here you can even see on the side of Framingham. Excuse me. I got a little confused. That it's Sejuani and Bard. So we're definitely going for the heavy CC, heavy engage. Yeah. Which is going to be really nice. That's definitely more... Um, has more synergy and cohesion than the J4 to the Bard. Yeah, and that is, you know, something that was banned last game. That's Sejuani. And Sejuani, in my opinion, is a, probably one of the stronger junglers on this patch right now. Yeah, she's um, very strong. So, instead of opting for that Yasuo ban, it does give the Sejuani over to Combative Shadow now. So, as an Rek'Sai on the side of Becker, I have... Okay, does he play Rek'Sai? Uh, Do you know? His top three, he might have had a couple games on Rek'Sai. I overall think the champion's okay. She recently got, like, quality of life buffs, but that doesn't make her great. When she can get ahead, it's awesome. Like, she feels yep. she does a ton of damage. You know, consistent engagement, consistent ults. Like, yep. it, it feels great. But her clear really isn't that healthy, whereas Sejuani is. And then she can just 2v2 duel every time with her W and Didn't e. they just update something with Reptai this patch? They did. did. They, yeah, her ultimate, right? Yeah, so that you that, can't get fixed, away from it. Yeah, exactly. Unless you... I can't remember what it was. But essentially, it's impossible to dodge it now. Um, mm -hmm. Without, I think, the use of a flash or something. Probably, yeah. Sorts. It seems to be anything that was a blink or flash would... Um, oh, yeah, would prevent that from happening, mm -hmm. yeah. But we do see the Varus, too, right? And that's something I would not necessarily expect. I Granted, I haven't seen the Varus since the new patch changes came out. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, I mean, we get to see this. I mean, there were many... There was an Ezreal, there was an Az. There were so many different options here, and they decided to go with the Varus. So, um, that's got to be some sort of comfort pick, right? Oh, we can see a... Yeah, for sure. And then we can see a Lissandra being like through an Orianna. So, it looks like they're definitely pinching the... The mid champion pool to see maybe get them something that they're not so comfortable on. Yeah, but even still, if I recall correctly, let's look at this, right? Um, well, I have Framingham up here now, but what it looks like is Becker's mid laner plays Ori, Nico, and Diana were her top lane, right? Correct. So I know that Nico is one of my favorite champions to play because she's, first of all, her voice lines are amazing. So I'd love to see that come out. I don't think it will, but that would be really interesting to see. But we do see the Caitlyn. Ooh, the Irelia. That's and like a Irelia. pseudo Yasuo. That's going to yeah. be pretty nice to see. Okay, I mean... I mean, the Nico's not bad, right, into Irelia? If she just dashes uh, in, you just throw your Q and yeah, snare her. It's not going to feel bad. I know that, from what I understand, Nico is better seen as a support now, to be completely honest. So I'm not entirely sure what they're going to go with mid. They are kind of being forced to choose it. I mean, they know what they're going into. Um, it's more of, is mid going to get a, okay, so is that Karthus mid? Yeah. Karma or, mid, okay, I like mid. that. I like that a lot with the Lulu, right? As well as a Darius. So, Dorna, I think that's Dorna, right? No, that's um, um, Bowler top Joe. Lane? No, top laners, oh, Funk Pie. So, he plays Darius, right? He mm -hmm. plays a lot of bullies in the top lane. So, him getting that Darius, couple that with Lulu and Karma, there's a, you know, engage on the wreck side. Darius just gets in there. This is pretty much all in his ball right, ball right now, right? It's in yeah. his court. So 
with those shields, with that speed up and what they can do to keep Darius alive or even Varus alive, like, I don't really know how the Rek'Sai fits into this comp, but, I mean, probably just a comfort pick. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas if you look on the side of framing him at this point, they do get a Jax to kind of deal with that. And, I mean, pretty much bread and butter of what they did last game, right? If we look at it, they still got the Caitlyn Bard. Instead of a Yasuo, they pull out the Aurelia, and then... You know, that's all she wrote, really. Yeah, and this team is going to be very scary if they get ahead because you also have synergy with Sejuani passive from both your soul laners. So ganking is going to be a lot easier. Getting neutral objective is going to be a lot faster because you're constantly proccing um, your E over and over again. Yep. Um, so it is going to be kind of scary for Becker in the beginning. Um, it's really going to hinge on whether or not Darius can get ahead because you can see it's Lulu mid and she doesn't really bring that much kill pressure. She used to be a lot better when she had higher AP ratios and... Um, higher everything, lower cooldowns, so it's kind of, um, it's going to be interesting and see if maybe they can properly set up their bot lane to where they have the advantage but more capitalize on it, so. Yeah, and still, if we just, like, look at these lanes, right, like, Jax versus Darius, if, if, ja if Darius can get ahead, that's It's going to be, be pretty huge. hard, yeah, exactly. Jax will still scale because that's what Jax does, but it's going to take him a long time to get to that point where he can match against Darius if he goes, you know, down in lane. If Jax gets ahead in lane against Darius, like, with this Sejuani, they're never going to get off the ground. And no. that's the scary thing, is if this Darius does not dominate, this could just pretty much be the series right there. Yeah, so it is. Well, we got about two minutes to go. So, yeah, it is really going to hinge on this Darius and their Vars, really. Uh, I am curious to see what build Rek'Sai is going to go, uh, if they end up going Cinderhulk into, like, Black Cleaver, or just go full damage and say, you know, forget it, like, let's just try and go ham and try to set up engages as much as possible and see because yep. she can burst down ADs, especially in the late game with a full build. Like, if you got onto a Caitlyn, Caitlyn's probably dead. And with the ulti forcing her to flash, you're at least trading there, and if you trade, you know, your life for that, you know, maybe it ends up being worth in some way somehow, so. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> I think what uh, sorry. No, it's fine. I, mean, uh, I think what Becker really has to do is be extremely proactive with this Rexai. Um, do what they did in the first game by getting that first blood, but also maintaining that pressure and just kinda have that snowball effect. Like you wanna There's lead. no Nunu in this game. Exactly. So you are gonna wanna lead like it is more on you to carry. Like you are choosing a carry jungler, um, it is on you, like I said. So I mean, but looking back, right, at the test stream we did with between Becker and Worcester State, um, Bartender played Zinzao, and he kind of went off early game, right? Mm, I think yeah. he got four kills sub-10 minutes. Um, so he's done that before against Worcester State, who you know has similar, if not, I believe, probably a better team setup mm. with how their ranks go. Um, so um, it, it's not out of the range of possibility that Rek'Sai could do that, as well as Rek'Sai can be sort of a pseudo-tank, pseudo, you know, Bruiser, that's what he does, right? Yeah. Or she does, rather. So, couple that with the shields from the Lulu, the shields from the Karma, the speed up. There's so much to keep them safe that I think it's going to be a rough time, at least, you know, in the early game. Mm -hmm. So, And you do have to consider that, I mean, at least Lulu can polymorph their engages from Sejuani. It's more yeah. about just if their jungler X Smithies her ulti and completely with so no X Smithy so oh, uh, yeah we'll, we'll see I, I'm fairly confident that if they do get to a stalemate and just kind of scale that Framingham will take it over just from the innate scaling of their team obviously I really does feel slightly worse um, with the changes to her passive and everything but you know if she gets ahead she's still an extremely scary champion yep um I'll swap this right on over now to the game screen and pop it up here. And we'll load in. It's going to look a little bit weird just because the overlay, but we'll see. But let's look at these matches, right? The new Conqueror. Both top laners have that. Press the attack on Rek'Sai, so it looks like that she could be going for that bruisery she's, style. Yeah, it definitely looks like she's going more for a carry play style. So, but... Just looking at this, right? What about this Lulu into Irelia? What, what do you think is going to happen here? Um, I don't think I've seen this matchup. I, don't think, I honestly think the lane just ends up being given to Irelia. Like, uh, Lulu really doesn't have any kill pressure and is played more as a support. Like, her AP scalings aren't the best then anymore, um, comparatively as to when she was meta mid lane. Yeah. But she can still do some damage, so... In, I mean, Irelia just has to respect the dive, or, um, excuse me, 
when she dives Lulu because of her polymorph, but, I mean, if she can live that, then, you know, the lane's kind of over. I mean, even still, look at the Lulu. She's got an Ignite. Yeah, that's an so Ignite Lulu. Pretty aggressive, for Yeah, sure. that's and incredibly you can see, aggressive. Okay. Yeah. So they are contesting more vision. More wards going out, though, this game. Yeah. In that line of scrimmage, making sure that there's no sneaky business. Actually, they're very early wards. I don't even know if they're going to be up for the Scuttle Crab for the most part. Uh, no, typically yeah. if you... Because Scuttle comes at 158, I believe. Yeah, and those be wards only last a minute. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be right before... Right before uh, Scuttle spawns. So, looking at how this is set up, though, right? We have Sejuani up on the top side starting the red buff, as well as Rek'Sai starting on her red buff as well. So, it's a mirrored matchup right now at this point. Um, but we do have to see where these guys are going to put their pressure, right? I, I would think that, logically speaking, that most of the pressure would be top side for Becker, right? And I got, I, I should change the names, actually. I need to do that right now. It's going to look a little weird, guys. I'm sorry. I forgot to do this earlier. Becker, FSU, and FSU, Becker. Bada bing. There you go. All right, that was a really good leash there for Rek'Sai. Oh, are they going for the cheeky level two here? No. Ooh, I really is just trading, especially with her passive and forever, uh, or conquer, excuse me. Doing so much damage. Yeah, exactly. So once she hits that level two, she, Lulu's really going to have to be careful because she doesn't have TP again, so. Yeah, but Rek'Sai, oh, Rek'Sai is, is in there. Yeah. Does have the Burrow available. Nice Prey Seeker. Gonna flash. Does have the Flash. Does force it out of Irelia, though. Mm. Really nicely done to relieve some pressure in that mid lane. Lulu still has that Ignite, and Irelia is quite low now without yeah. that flash available. It you know, couldn't be really nice for this Lulu here. Yeah, it could have been a kill, I think, if Rek'Sai had flashed sooner and uh, or Rek'Sai had flashed at all with the Lulu event. I think she would have been dead at that point. Yeah, I mean, ooh, the QN does oh, get the stun. Going. Nice uh, early ooh. setup there. Oh, Ignite goes Luke down. Kill. Lulu has flash Ignite. That is going to be a first blood, it looks like, potentially. Why oh, are we no, looking by like, no? The Ignite nerfs, no way. And Look at that, I really gets out with a sliver of health. Uh, she just Oh the Q snipe with Pix! That was beautiful from a Lulu right there. I think Ariad proct as well. Holy cow, nicely done, and Lulu gets level three. All of that minion wave there forces that to tower potentially. And that is huge for Lulu. Nice pullback onto the Jax. Does get the um, blocking there, but still, Darius does trade incredibly well, especially early game like this. Holy cow, that was hype. My god. Uh, that's definitely a feels bad for mid to literally just barely get clipped by the Lulu Q and then see Airy just like come over and then yep. finish you that off. That was Pigs plus Airy and the Q. That was beautifully done. Oh man, I love that kind of stuff where you just pop air, uh, your Pigs onto a minion then Q like that. Oh, beautiful. But anyways, nice stun there from Bard. Not going to mean too much. Just a little bit of poke damage here. He is going a little bit out of mana there. He should be able to sustain up a bit, but nice pressure here from Becker doing what they can in the bot lane. And they do have a good... Oh, the really engage here. In. Look at that. Nice Q onto Lulu there. It does have... St Ignite still. Fixie does pop it. And Lulu Ooh, looks, looks like he's in trouble. Does dead. she have the shield? Oh, and she does live just barely. Lulu shield coming in clutch there. That's another feels bad man for the mid lane. But if we just look at the farm here... Lulu does not have it. Wow, look at that damage onto Caitlyn, too, as I'm talking about mid lane, but... Yeah, it looks like Bot is able to apply more pressure than from what we saw last game, so they are getting a decent... Not lead, but they are at least pressuring their bot lane. Yeah, and last game they only had... They had a Twitch, which makes it really difficult for that, right? No, they had yeah, a... No, they were playing they the Caitlyn, had the Caitlyn yeah, right? against the Twitch, yeah. and they couldn't for some reason get the... So they would shove lane and have them on a turret, but they were eventually getting out CS and out traded, so it's yeah. good to see some, like... Breath of Life within their bot lane, able to poke out their Caitlyn in an opposite matchup, and what should be more Caitlyn favored for the early game. Yeah, but Sejuani is bot lane now. That uh, ward will get popped by the Scryer's Bloom here. They do know Sejuani is there. The pings are going down. But just look at it across the map, right? Framingham's doing better in farm pretty much everywhere aside from bot lane. And that is a huge wave that she's gonna should be able to farm under tower, therefore. Um, which means Framingham's just out farming their opponents. And at this point, 15 to 27 in the mid lane is a big deal. You know, not a huge deal in the top lane, but Darius is doing what he can to keep Jax down. But, you know, that farm is going to be a huge thing for that Darius top lane if he cannot keep up. More in the mid lane now. 
trading back and forth. Lane is pushing into Darius, which I guess this is where you would want it to be. Nice pullback onto the Jax. Does get the counter strike there. Alrighty, so they do have vision of Rek'Sai, so they know where she has bought River. Um, their bot lane shouldn't have an idea. They could potentially collapse. Oh, looks like they're going to. Yep. Or just contest vision. So no worries either way, just kind of stopping Rek'Sai in her tracks and making sure they have an idea of where she is so no one is caught off uh, is caught off guard, excuse me. Yeah, but Rek'Sai is positioned towards the bot lane. Sejuani is in that top lane brush right there. Oh, she there he is, is in a awkward spot here. He's Even probably he gonna go six, for it. Yeah. Oh, he should have just gone for it. The Sejuani holding it a little yeah, bit longer. There was no, no was... reason for Darius to keep walking up, though. So I've played many uh, Sejuani, and like you'd actually be surprised by the amount of damage she does, even though she's yep. just a tank. Like It feels pretty dumb, especially even with Blue Smite. Like You can still get Ooh. a really decent combo. That's some nice trading going on with Lulu. Oh, but Fixie she is level 6. six. She oh, does not Rek'Sai. have Flash available or her ultimate. Rek'Sai is here. Nice. The Ignite goes down. Fixie is going to pick up the kill. Now Darius is in a bit of trouble. Does get picked off. Lulu does get the return kill onto Irelia with that Ignite proc. And now the game is 2 for 2. The lane's relatively evened out here. Bot lane winning for Becker, but it looks like top side winning for Framingham, which is exactly what we didn't want to see for Becker. It's an unfortunate gank top side. Yep. I don't know why Darius was still there. He didn't. He went back up for that next wave. He was already backing and walked back up for that next yeah, wave. Yeah, probably and, uh, gritted a little bit. Honestly, yeah. probably should have completed the back just TP to turret because that way you at least have your. Um, you have an item advantage, and you also have He's a health advantage it. from biting. He's saving the TP, too. Oh, that's not going to be bad. I mean, hopefully he doesn't really feel the negative effects of that, but it could come back to oh, bite him. Oh, the stun on to Lulu again, and Q on it, as well as the Tiamat there. Good trading from Irelia here. She's still pretty much bullying the snot out of Lulu here. Yeah, and you can see Sejuani is actually in their blue side jungle, so Fixie is feeling rather confident, but you can also see that there's a Rek'Sai turret still in his lane, so... Oh, it looks like Rek'Sai is going in. Yeah, he does have that flash available. Ignite goes down onto Lulu. She does not have the ultimate yet. Still only level 5. Rek'Sai is taking so much damage, but Pixie goes down again to this Lulu, who is now level 6, gets the ultimate onto Rek'Sai. Holy cow, man. That's going to be a one for one. I think, yeah, Rek'Sai looked like she was waiting for the, um, I thought she went Sejuani. down there. No, yeah, she was waiting for the Sejuani proc so she could ulti and then go out of, uh, or be untargeted, which is actually really smart, and then flashed out. That was really well done. Good yeah, they kill are, there. they are really punishing uh, Fixie's over-aggressiveness, and he's not really respecting the damage that Rek'Sai is bringing, as well as the CC that they're bringing overall. So he should probably just, you know, kind of slow it down a bit, place the control ward down. Ooh, good trade in the bot lane back and forth, making it a little bit even there between both the laners. Both of the AD carries are pretty much oom at this point. And now Fixie's gonna, or Combative Shadow Rider is going to pick up that red buff. And we have a huge wave pushing into Fixie again. Yeah, this farm differential, regardless of how many kills Lulu has, man, that is a huge difference. Oh, she walks into stun again, going under tower, the ultimate goes down. Fixie just. So yeah, that's. that's feels so bad, man. Yeah, Fixie should probably just clear these Rek'Sai turrets, especially the one that's sticking in his lane, because that would have gotten him killed, but, you know, nice solo kill nonetheless. Yeah, those tunnels are pretty important for Rek'Sai right there, but still, he well, is coming see, top yeah, lane. Yeah, going top side. It is a bit tricky as a ja or ganking a Jax, because he can either jump out, or if he has a stun, you know, if you knock him up, he's just going to stun you both anyways and jump away, so. Yeah. So, we do have him pushing in, but top lane farm is even for the most part. Yeah. It is a larger way of oh, building Rek'Sai up the Jax, down. Nice ultimate, change of corruption goes down onto Caitlyn, but Bard ultimate is going to prevent much more from happening. Irelia is roaming bot lane, but he is spotted out by the Rek'Sai. Lulu clearing a pink ward here, and now it looks like there was going to be a roam, but that did not happen after the Bard ultimate landed. Back to standard clears here as we look at this lane. Yeah, there, there is such a discrepancy in the mid lane here. Yeah, and even there's a pretty nice CS lead going bot and top as well. Um, but yeah, mid lane is for sure feeling the forefront of that. Yeah, if we like just looking at this. About 45 ish CS. Yeah, 46. Yeah, just just looking at this, right? That is a huge amount of gold in Irelia's pocket. And she's got two kills. To three right now in this mid lane and it's not looking good 
Lulu's always going to be a factor just because of her shield and her ultimate. Exactly. But, I mean, at this point, you don't want to be down 40 CS at 10 minutes. Oh, oh like nice chimey tunnel coming through. Does get the flash out of Bowler Joe and the heal to try and do what he can, but... Nice, the Juani ultimate does land on Varus, and that is pretty much all she wrote. That is another kill over for the side of Framingham. So now they can shove bot. They can choose to either chip the tower and get Dragon, or just go right to Dragon. And it looks like they are going to go right to Dragon. Yeah. Uh, which does seem like a pretty smart choice, you know. Also to cycle out Windrake, but it is still really good, especially for a champion like Bard. That extra out-of-combat movement speed is going to feel really nice on top of your Chime stats. Yeah, that roaming for Bard is huge, and that extra movement speed that you get from that Windrake is just going to add to that. But he is clearing all the plants there, and then Mystical Tunnel right out, and that's going to be the Air Drake picked up for Framingham here. And that's still a 2,000 gold lead, but again, I really goes right in onto this Lulu. You are not safe anywhere. It does force the flash. The tower gets Bartled, and Lulu again goes down to this Irelia, pulling out so much damage. That is an annoying spectator bug, and we are, we are into uh, this like, mid lane zone. Like the Azir spectator bug with his turret. It must have just been a mixture of, what, the Bard ultimate on the tower? I think yeah. so? Yeah, I don't know. That was interesting. That's interesting. But we do see... Okay, it's better now. Karma does get engaged on by the Sejuani knockup from the wreck side. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. Chain of Corruption does go down. That is a pickup for Varus. One kill. Trade back there. And that did go on to the Varus. So that is very good for the side of Becker now. There is a huge... Amount of damage going down onto that bot lane tower, though, as they're trying to run there and stop Caitlyn from doing what she can to get those turret plates. But still, she got free time and a free plate for that. Alrighty, so looks like no one really has any vision for topside uh, river. It doesn't look like anyone wants to grab the rift hill just yet, but that might change, especially with the discrepancy Oof. with soul laners or mid lane. Excuse me. Yeah. See, it really has a 500 gold bounty. That's going to feel pretty good if anyone picks that up. But And it's not crazy to think that, right? Irelia has died three times. Yeah, You know, exactly. Fixie is hyper, hyper aggressive. Lulu has forced, is forced to farm with her Q, her Glitterlands, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing she can do to deal with that Irelia, unfortunately, at this point. And quite honestly, looking at the rest of her team right now, Darius just picks up the Black Cleaver, and I don't even think he can deal with Irelia right now. No, not really. But it is nice, though, because you are going to have a Lulu that is going AP, but so you're still going to get really nice shields, and you also have another Enchanted Sport in Karma. So I'm assuming that Karma is eventually going to get something like a uh, Ardent Sensor, and then maybe that really helps out the uh, Darius to get his passive going, stacks getting faster, you know, and then once he gets a 5-stack ulti on you, you know, you're dead. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, look at that's this. That's kind of the hope there. Oh, does get the snare into Caitlyn, but the Rain of Arrows does not connect. Uh, and still, I mean, I guess Lulu is farming much better now. It does get the Glitter Lance for the slow. Yeah, if she misses that, you know, Glitter Lance for that slow, or if she misses that Polymorph, she she's trouble. dead. Mm -hmm. Oof, that was a lot of damage. Oh, Darius Oof. does walk into Framingham, though, doing that Rift Herald. They do get it. Oh, Rek'Sai is there, but now Fixie is here to pick it up. Darius is... Oh, oh does that feel no. so bad as the Darius ultimate is stopped by the Sejuani ultimate. And now Lulu again falls, this time to the Jax. That is unfortunate. Oh, I don't, Okay, man. yeah, so Sejuani did, or was able to get the Rift Herald. That could have been so big. Yeah, exactly. That's very unfortunate. Three for O, and now they're just going to take their jungle, take the Rift, and then probably just push it topside, take a tier one. Uh, and they're still turret plating? No. Did it already go away? Oh, no. Yeah, it so, went away. Okay. It just went away. Cool. So that could have been huge if Darius had gotten that, but unfortunately, that's the 20 ultimate coming out clutch there. Yeah, that reminded me of uh, the 2015 Worlds moment. I don't remember who it was. I think it was someday on KT. There was legitimately, like, um, a Darius ult, but the only thing that stopped it was Victor W, and he was, like, max oh, height. It was hilarious, no. yeah. That feels so bad. Oh. Nice change of Krushkin, though. The Bartleman that does go down forces the heal out of Caitlyn. Uh, oh, nice still able to get snare out of does go down. Lots of damage onto uh -oh. Bard. Forces his flash. And now the bot lane from Framingham is incredibly low. They do have the vision to be here. They have that vision except for in the tri-rush. That is a lot of damage. You took that tower way too early. The ignite goes down, but 
that's going to be a cleanup for Caitlyn here. For oh, I don't know yeah. why you would do that because you're going to die anyways at this point. But that feels so bad. I don't even know what took the tower aggro there. Kind of seemed, yeah, I'm but, not sure. But that seemed like desperation for sure as Rexite does go in. Oh, that was a nice stun. That was a beautiful stun. He goes back in on Lulu trying to get out of that. Glitter Lance does land for that slow. Rexite does not have anything else. The tunnel was previously used. Does get the stun to knock up the ultimate from Lulu. Ultimate goes down, and that is a shutdown, shutdown for Rek'Sai on to Fixie now. Yeah, and this time it went from a 500 to a 750 gold uh, or uh, bounty. So that is going to feel really nice once Rek'Sai backs. Yep, and I mean, looking at this compared to the last game, right, 15 minutes in, Becker is down, what is it, about 5,000 gold? Still, 5,000 gold, that's the magic number, man. Yeah, it seems to kind of be like the nail in the coffin. Yeah, 60 minutes in, and this is just pretty much mostly just farming, right? Like, six kills is the difference, but, you know, there's huge farm differentials, especially in the mid lane. Nice counter-strike onto Darius. They are going to trade, but Darius is going to take the worst end of that as he's forced under his tower to farm this next wave. And okay, so we can see that red team or Framingham is gathering around the dragon, but their bot lane is shoved in, so I am curious to see if a team fight's gonna potentially break out. Chain of Corruption is just now off cooldown, so a team fight could be a little dangerous. So Juani does miss the ultimate really and nice sidestep. That's uh, still a dead karma, and your shields are not that strong, unfortunately. Did not have the empower up. But with Karma dead, Framingham are positioning for this Drake. Oh, that feels so bad. Yeah, it really does. We swapped just for that one cannon minion miss. Oi. Sorry. I swear to God, it's not. But. Alrighty, so they are going to take the dragon here, which is going to feel really nice. Um, oh. Maybe, yeah, yeah, there's nothing. Nothing you can really steal, unfortunately. Yep. Rexai not having flash, and he's probably going to go down here. He does knock him up, but change of corruption is going to be a little too little, too oh, late. This bar that was clutch. just on the edge, but bam, that is one other kill picked up Man, for and they're Caitlyn. just really snowballing this lead home. And they still have the Rift Hail, too, so once they take out this Tier 2, or Tier 1, excuse me, they're probably going to get the Tier 2, and honestly, if they're able to kill the enemies under the tower, can even go for an inhib. So this is looking very bad for Becker, unfortunately. Oh, those Irelia snares are hitting every time. Yeah, th and this bard, too, has been super clutch. Um, even with last game, with some of the ultis. Yeah, it looks like they can potentially get an inhib turret. Yeah, that stun does not land that time. A little too long for that, but that Rift Herald is going to get one more charge onto that tower. And that tower is in some trouble now. They look like they are going to get that onto yeah, the Rift Herald. It will nice fall, damage. but... Darius still top lane. This top lane, Jax top lane, Darius, not doing what Darius wants to do, right? Not taking over a game, and unfortunately, no, Jax unfortunately, has yeah. the three kills. It's kind of like the same story from last game where... Yeah, Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. There's a solo kill under that turret, and that's going to be over for top side, really. I mean, unless you somehow saw it to major late game where everyone is even everywhere, and gold doesn't and even really still, make a difference. even still, it's Jax, though, right? Yeah, but Jax, you can see they're almost 10,000 gold down at 18 minutes like yeah. this is looking pretty brutal but still we do have the game to be played eclipse is shoving in the top lane that looks like it's going to be a 9,000 goal lead now for framingham with that tower going down and, and it's looking like yeah. becker's not really going to be able to move unless you know framingham isn't there uh, anywhere on the map really isn't theirs unfortunately and they're kind of going to be like last game um wherever Framingham just lets them live. Oh, oh that's like risky. I really is in that brush, though. And she does look like... But Bard's clearing a ward, in other news. <laughs> yeah, it does look like Rek'Sai decided to back out. Yeah, a smart move by the Rek'Sai there. Nice. Dealing the jungle from Becker right now. Framingham doing everything they can to just kind of choke the life out of Becker at this point. There's not much more, aside from that Baron being up in about 30 seconds... Or that bot lane inhibitor, right? They still have two outer towers to take and then could pretty much just position for that Baron, right? They have pretty much two items complete on nearly everyone at this point. Yeah, exactly. And this is going to feel really rough, seeing as some people are only just getting their first item now. Um, I'm really not sure what it's going to be able to do. Yeah, that is. So okay. it is going to be more on hit. I thought he was going to go for IE at first. So did I. Like, That's yeah, what I was thinking, because yeah, he had the pickaxe. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just decided to switch. Maybe that felt like he was going to scale better with it. I'm not sure, but 
Yeah, Becker can't really get anything. The jungle is being lost from their solo laners, nonetheless. And it looks like they are going to be in trouble. Ooh, oh. forging the flash out of the karma there. Really nicely done with these stuns from Fixie are being clutch right now. But yeah, they've been really a, everyone from framing him. Yeah, exactly. It's been super on point. Um, really not much to say here except that Framingham's done a really good job at forcing Becker in these uncomfortable sit situations. Even when they were capitalizing, there was somewhere else where they were potentially... Irelia is behind the turret right now. This could be a potential dive here. Yeah, we could see like a classic fanatic death. Oh, oh, they sniffed something out. They knew something was funky oh, right there. Like Fixie might be in somewhat trouble. No. Yeah, there's no tower there aside from the inhibitor tower. There's no way they can do anything, but it looks like Shadow wanted to go in onto Bartender there, but with that wave pushing in, this is going to be really hard to defend. All of the ultimates from everyone is available at this point right now. The ultimate does go oh, down onto tower. They want to go ham right now. The ult does hit onto Karma. The tower does go down. No one else does die, but with Irelia ultimate down, that is a big ultimate. Not available to Framingham, but Becker don't have an option. They don't have the opportunity to go in and engage. They are so far behind at this point that if they do, they feel like they would surely lose so now it looks like framing i'm just going to go mid you know force top especially now you have the uh super minion spawning that's going to be a point of pressure and that's actually probably the best point um or best inhib you could get because now that they have to focus attention on the bot side uh you can easily get a baron on the opposite side of the map so yeah and caitlin's just picking off that tower one by one with her extra range right there but and especially with that red buff, that's just going to feel so bad. The Runen's Hurricane coming in, clearing that wave, getting the wave set up. I will say, Becker does have a lot of vision for that Baron pit, though. Yeah, right? which is which is nice. So they are going to be able to scout it out if they can see them in that area. Um, it looks like Darius hit back. Are they going to go for a dive? Ooh, nice ultimate on the bartender. Does get out of that. Oh my, so much damage on the Karma. I think that was just a trap. But... That is so much, and with Karma down, I don't think Becker can defend this outer tower. Yeah, no, they're gonna, they lose their shielding and effectively pseudo healing, so yeah, it's gonna be unfortunate. Uh, a little bit of BM from framing him. Here it is. They're gonna take this outer tower now and rotate for that other Cloud Drake. Interesting. Framingham are really kind of drawing this out, right? They don't really need to do this at this point. They're 1,100 gold, or 11,000 gold. Ahead, ahead of 22 minutes. That is an insane amount of money. Yeah, it's gonna... And with all those extra stats from the Cloud Drake, and that, that's in combat move speed too. What is that, extra 2% move speed in combat now, as well as the Ocean Drake? That's yeah, huge. Yeah, they're gonna feel really nice. Especially because they're probably just gonna go to Baron, take away the mission, and just end the game, really. Yeah, I mean, they are trying to get some vision back on the side of Becker's jungle, but... That pink ward is the only vision that they have in that Baron pit right now. They have two pink wards in that top river, but Framingham's going to clear that out right now. Bartender's going to try and do what he can to clear out this vision, see what he can do, but Fixie is positioning aggressively. Misses the stun. Ooh, gets that's a nice, nice pull. pullback from Darius, though. All bit to slow down the enemy. Bartender does get the knockup on Irelia. Fixie going a little bit too far in. They do get the pick off, and Darius picks up that kill, right, that was which could be nice. huge. Yeah. That's big return back. I don't think that was a shutdown because she did go down earlier, but still, oh, that yeah, is a lot know. of damage. Caitlyn I... gets engaged on um, Darius, but the Q does not land. Lulu is there. Oh, those traps doing so much work. The knock up onto Jax. Yeah. Rek'Sai goes down, and that is a beautiful Sejuani ultimate onto the Varus. That's exactly who you want to land it on, but Varus is in an awkward spot. Can Bard get the flash? Q, he does, and then the meat for the finishing blow. And now, Caitlyn's doing what she can to chase down the Lulu, but Sejuani's with those slow is going to mean another one over to Caitlyn with a thousand gold bounty and seven kills yeah, to her that name. that was looking unfortunate. That was looking good at first when they had traded, you know, onto the Irelia, but it looks like they're gonna finish the game here yeah that started off so well for the Darius picking up that kill but just got a little bit too excited there and went a little far too forward and now they are shoving in the tower karma is the only one left alive now Rek'Sai is coming in yeah they're just going for some extra kills at this point the Rek'Sai yeah, knockout really style points yeah yeah this is extra padding the numbers padding padding the stat page here is Lulu is now up as well as Varus and karma okay, so they can't end yet Yep, not yet. They do get the snare onto oh, Bard. Bard go down? Yeah, Rek'Sai goes in onto Caitlyn, forces the heal, but 
is gonna fall. Oh, the flash Q onto Caitlyn does, barely doesn't do enough. Caitlyn does pick up her eighth kill of the game at this point, and that is rough. Yeah, that looks so good in that jungle, but then they just over-aggressed right there. Rexite, or er, Darius picked up that kill onto Irelia, which was huge, but after that, they're walking into Caitlyn traps, and that just lost them that engagement. Yeah. Well, now we have the final items coming into the inventory of Framingham with three items, Infinity Edge, Rune Edge, and a Rapid Fire Cannon, yeah, as well really as a BF hurt. to just kind of stack on top of it. It's kind of for style points, you know? That's yeah. some nice critting right there, jeez. That is huge. I, You know what, I have to say though, as this game does feel a little bit one-sided, or has felt a little bit one-sided, but that's not without like the plays, right? Becker has done a good job with their individual plays, for the most part, right? That early first blood from the Lulu, while she was down in farm in the early game, right, she was down and having a really rough time, but she got an early first blood from exactly, over-aggressive yeah. from Fixie. So they, they can punish these things. So it's not like Becker is without life here, right? They they definitely have signs that show that they can do good. Yeah, look at this. and They're going actually on Jax, not doing anything, and Rek'Sai's doing what he can, but yeah, that's too much CC, man. Like. But there are signs of life, right? Becker are doing things that they think should work out, theoretically. Exactly. But they're just doing things a little bit too soon, a little bit too preemptive, right? A little bit. They don't just barely don't have enough vision to know what they're doing. But they're doing things to, you know, try and make sure this game doesn't fall out of proportion. You exactly. Know, fall out of control. It's, it's, they're not just rolling over. They're at least trying something. Yeah, and that's kind of what I like about this is they're doing what they can and... Unfortunately, they get a little bit too hypey in that one kill with the Darius, but with Baron up 27 it's minutes into the game, over. yeah, Framingham's just looking to stat pad some more. Fixie gets his seventh kill of the game. Yeah, they're just going straight on in. There's nothing they can do. Framingham is so far ahead. And 27 minutes and 15 seconds in, Framingham take game two and win the first game of the CCS. Cool beans. So, we have our next match scheduled. Let me take a look really quickly. At 2 p.m. Eastern Time, they will be getting here probably in about an hour or so. Um, but let me take a look really quickly. So a little bit of difference, actually. Before while I have the stream right now, we are going to be posting all of these vods on YouTube with all the casts. We're also, I'm also going to be doing different like team fight breakdowns and different content, as oh, well as cool. looking to colleges to do a lot of different content as well. So if you guys want to do, I don't know, like some sort of this is our setup, whatever, you know, welcome to, you know, Becker house tour or something like that. We want that kind of content to put online. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Go check out our YouTube channel. I will probably be posting all of those things. Like, at least the VODs will be up probably by Monday at the latest. Um, and then other things like those uh, team fight breakdowns and such are pretty dependent upon the fights that we do have or the matches that we do have. But be sure to go check that out. Uh, we're going to take a break and wait for the next game starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time between Worcester and Bentley. So join us back then. And um, at this point, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first match.